Apple today introducing three new iPhones. CEO Tim Cook took the stage, unveiled these devices uh, for consumers, developers, and investors. Take a listen. It's clearly the best lineup we've had by far, taking the breakthroughs of iPhone 10 even further than before and making them available to even more people. So let's run through the new models, the specs, the pricing. There is the iPhone 10s and the iPhone 10s Max, 5.8 inch and 6.5 inch OLED displays, respectively. That 6.5 inches, by the way, remember that is the biggest display ever for an iPhone. I got the chance quickly to test drive them to check them out. That the difference in display is definitely notable there. Faster and improved dual camera system, and powered by that new A12 Bionic chip. Now the 10s starts at $999. The 10s Max starts at $1,099. That was actually higher than at least some on the street had expected. Pre-orders for those phones are going to begin on September 14th. Availability beginning September 21st. Apple also introduced this third model, though, a newer, lower-priced iPhone 10R, 6.1-inch LCD display. The new A12 Bionic chip, also powering that handset, starts at $749. Pre-orders there start October 19th. That's going to be available beginning. October 26. A couple questions here uh, for investors to think about. What is the mix of iPhones going to be in the quarters ahead? Obviously, that's going to have a big impact on margins, on average selling prices. Also, just more broadly, when Tim Cook took the stage there, did he convince enough people that the iPhone 10 isn't just his most popular phone, but it's his most mainstream phone? Because he basically just introduced three new iPhone 10s to choose from. And finally, did he get investors uh, and consumers excited about that new watch as well, which is coming with some new FDA approved health features. Guys, back to you. Josh, what's your take on, on overall pricing? Does it feed into this narrative that they're doubling down on the premium pricing, especially after Warren Buffett told Becky like a week or two ago that a thousand doesn't even seem that high for such a must have item like an iPhone? Right. Uh, the uh, you know Warren Buffett certainly that take is one on the street. The pricing was so interesting because it was really a wild card, and analysts were kind of all over the place. You know, I talked to some analysts who thought actually um, it was going to be $999. In other words, the same as the 10, because they told me they just thought that was the ceiling. That's the most people are going to buy. Others said um, they disagree with that because quarter in and quarter out, Cook had said that 10 was performing strongly. So their point was knowing that, knowing the 10 was performing strongly against the backdrop of a strong economy, why would he leave margin on the table? So they've gone for that higher price point. We're going to soon find out uh, what consumers think about it. Okay, Josh, great stuff. Thank you very much for that. Mike, if we consider the rally that the shares have had since the last earnings, was the biggest factor behind that the better than expected average selling price of the phone? It and seemed like it, yes. Does this help that? Combined, by the way, with some relatively low expectations uh, for iPhone in that last quarter as well. So, yes, I do think so. It probably helps. It feeds into that story that Apple keeps essentially pulling its customers in that direction of newer, better, more refreshed phones. And there's such a huge install base of phones that are kind of ready for upgrade mm -hmm. that I think it makes sense. Also, the price sensitivity, I think, has been reduced among customers because of the Apple payment plan. Zero interest, to 50 or 60 or $70 a month, as opposed to, at one time, uh, expense of $1,000. And I know that it's not the main revenue driver. I mean, iPhone is still more than 60% of, of revenues, but the watch addition was interesting and the, all the new capabilities around it, they're framing it as an intelligent guardian for your health. And I just wonder if this is going to be a must have product versus something that, that was sort of nice to have before right. the Apple Watch and what that does in terms of the market and a potential revenue driver for the company. Big question when the watch initially came out was why do I need this, right? right. What does it really do? It's just kind of an extra little tool to see my texts and emails and things like that. So this is an answer to that. I do think, you know, the watch and the other kind of secondary products are becoming big enough that they matter now, even though they're not the main driver. Nancy, you're a holder of uh, Apple stock. Uh, does today change your perspective on it in either direction? No, I, I like a lot what I heard. Uh, this is always the opportunity for the critics to come in and say it's not enough. You know, right the year after Tim Cook took over, there was questions of whether or not he would remain the CEO, whether he was doing his job. The next year, he made Barron's top CEOs list. Questions about services in this last quarter, we heard that we're going to be, you know, at double the services revenues by 2021. I, I think this company is hitting on 
on most cylinders and that it's the kind of company that everyone likes to pick apart. Where's streaming? Uh, where's the content? But I, I'm, I'm thrilled. I, I'm, uh, I'm in line for a Max and uh, I'm ready to switch over my Spotify subscription to Apple Music. So one, I like what I heard. $1,099. I hope you've got it ready, Nancy. <laughs> payment plan, Will. Payment plan. <laughs>